first guest hails all the way from Houston, Texas. He is the one of the guitarist, uh, accordion, banjo, and one of the lead vocalist in Days and Days. Please help me welcome to the show, very first time, very first guest, Jesse Sandeas. How are we doing? Oh, doing all right. I mean, we're hanging in there. All things considered, pretty fucking good. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, can I? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's explicit language. Yeah, oh, yeah, uh, we're good. We're good with that. Uh, uh, yeah, we can swear okay. on that. Okay, all right. So, yeah, well, I'm doing fucking shit and good, but. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Um, for our viewers at home who may have never heard of Days and Days before, uh, describe the band for somebody who might have never heard of you. <laughs> um, it's just, it's punk rock music, but we couldn't afford uh, drums or amps. I love it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, now you guys been around, been around for a while, been around, you know, doing your thing. Um, obviously, you started doing like house shows back in the day, stuff like that, and then playing up to bigger festivals with Weezer. <laughs> you know, what is uh, what has that ride been like? You know, over the years. <laughs> I mean, technically, we played with Weezer. Uh, we we really only played at like it was a festival that Weezer made like three stages away from us. Uh, but we figured <laughs> that we should uh, take the opportunity. Uh, we, it's been weird though. It's been super weird, surreal. Um, when we started. Um, Playing, playing and writing music uh, in our backyard in San Mar. That's never, ever did we think that uh, we would be in a studio with that mic from no effects. Like uh, it, it's just been so bizarre. Uh, and we're not complaining. It's, it's been, uh, but it has been strange. Absolutely. Um, like you said, you started just playing for fun. Um, what got you guys together in the first place? What kind of influenced you to be like, you know, fuck it, let's 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 do this? What was kind of the motivating force in the beginning? It was just uh, Whit and I were. Uh, Whitney is the uh, trumpet player for uh, days and days. Uh, I just uh, started. Um, my family bought me a piece of guitar. And uh, we moved to uh, San Marcos, and we're. San Marcos is a great place. It's a lovely town. But if you're not super into like keg parties and like dope shit, like it's pretty boring. And we weren't at the, at the time or now. Um, so we're super bored. We didn't have anything to do. Uh, and we started writing. Uh, just dumb little songs because we heard a uh, acid song by Pat and Benny, uh, and and yeah, and we just we started writing songs and uh, just to keep ourselves from being super bored. And uh, Whitney was like, "Hey, we're gonna write all these songs. Maybe we should play them somewhere." So we uh, started playing a bunch of like open mic nights. Um, and I guess if, we, if we're playing open mic nights, we should have a name for the band. And literally the first thing that I said was Days and Days. And we just stuck with that. So that's how it happened. That's awesome. So you give like <clears throat> some credit to like, you know, artists like, uh, like you said, like Pat the Bunny and like anybody else that kind of like, you know, pushed you in that direction and be like, you know what? Like, fuck if, you know, these guys can do it, we can do it. Definitely, definitely Pat, uh, Neutral, No Cotel, uh, Bright Eyes, um, Leftover Crack, and and everything else that they, like all their side projects. Yeah. Um, ch choking Victims, Stop Fucking Hipsters, all that kind of shit. Yeah. 
Dude, the leftover crack, man, they fucking just kill it live, man. <clears throat> Holy shit. Dude, unbelievable. Yeah. We drove all the way down from Maine to go to New Jersey to, like, outside of the Stone Pony on the beach to go see, like, No Effects and freaking Leftover Crack and uh, fucking can't remember who else played on that show. There was somebody else that was really important and it's going to come back to me because they were like, it'll come back to me. Anyways, but... Um, I missed, you know, I mean, had awesome opportunities seeing them in Boston and Providence, living down there for years and stuff like that. Definitely, definitely a great band to see. If you guys have never heard of Leftover Crack, definitely look it up. We're not just being crass. It's a, it's a fantastic band. <laughs> um, so when when I first heard you guys, it was a few years ago. Um, friend had shown me you guys and like Johnny Hobo and the Freight Trains. Um, and I was just like, my my like immediate reaction to you guys was just, just like fuck, dude. Just somebody somebody I can relate to um, on a personal note, um, where it's kind of your your lyrical content is kind of like that dark inner monologue, that personal private self, and you're not afraid to put it out there and you know hit subjects like self worth and depression and addiction. Um, where I personally feel that you guys have kind of made these anthems for the disenfranchised, that's broken youth, you know, where, you know, we have these broken pieces, but, you know, we're not broken people, you know, we, we all have our flaws, we've made our mistakes, but this is who we are, and we're moving on together, you know, and that, that message yeah. has meant so, so much to me and many others over the years, and, when when along this crazy journey did you realize you know not just like people like myself but other people were like days and days like actually caught on um i <laughs> i i really don't think that we fully understand um what the <laughs> like dumb shit that we've just screamed out into the ether has, has done for anybody quite yet. Um, I do get a lot. I, I check out all my Facebook and Instagram messages and personally um, or as often as I can um, while still um, keeping my head space together. But yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's fucking weird. It's, it's, it's like to, to, the thought that, that these terrible thoughts that you have, you could just screen out into the ether. Um, so many people resonate with, uh, and scream back at you is just bizarre. And I'm so, so, sorry that so many people can resonate with those ideas because those are dark dark places to be and they're not fun places to go to but at the same time it helps me so much that people have been there and I, I, and, and to know that i'm not alone so um if you if if you're if you're experiencing those feelings if you're if you're if you're seeing those dark places, please please uh, hit us up. I, I know that it, especially right now it's it's weird because the, uh, we're all trapped inside. So if you don't have friends or family or professionals in, in the support industry, um, hit hit us up at. Uh, one three three eight four six five seven one is my phone number. Jesse Sunday has D and D uh, docs D O C S uh, at gmail dot com is my um, is my uh, is my email. I'll put that Please up on the bottom. Please hit me up because I'm not doing anything. Yeah, uh, little email. It's just, uh, don't Christmas. don't keep those thoughts inside because. Um, that they'll just toxify and um, what I and, be, and, be, and become 
kind of take over. But I, what I think is what's relatable is that, you know, a lot of us have been in that spot. And maybe, you know, not to say that you're personifying it, it you know, or, or we, but it's almost like a, a badge that we've, we've made it through this. You know, and you can look back on those those dark moments and just relish the fact that, fuck, I've made it this far since then. And I think, for me, that's a lot of what I, I get from your music. It's more of a, a victory song. This is where we were. This is where we're going. This is what we still got to deal with. But we're going to get there. You know, and I think that kind of, that baseline of hope, you know, that baseline of hope is huge. And like you said, and it's needed more than ever, you know. And like you said, especially with all this, this complete isolation that everybody's dealing with, um, and it's good. It's good to connect, you know, in any way you can. You know, it'd be through a video or through a phone call. You know, now's the the best time, as you know, than ever to take a few moments to to reinvest into you know yourself and your your self worth. Um, it's a great time for that. So I think it's fantastic. You're willing yeah. to sit and talk with your fans if they need an ear. If they need a fan, if they need a friend right now, if they, you know, in a hard spot, reach out to Jesse. I'll put the email across the bottom for you folks. Now, you've told... Right. Uh, also, fucking uh, friends, not fans. That's your word. Yeah. Absolutely. Please don't feel like uh, I starstruck, I think, is like a... Uh, the, the term? I, I hate that word. Yeah. I hate that. Uh, yeah. Your friends. You're Absolutely. Just, you just, you just, just know me from, like, screens. So, uh, yeah. But I, I, I am your friend. and uh, Hit me up whenever you want. That's beautiful. Now, you guys have played a ton of different shows over the years. I'm sure a bunch of crazy shit has happened. I've played a bunch of different house shows, and I've seen a bunch of shit. A lot of shit I can definitely not talk about on the fucking air. What's, uh, what's, <laughs> <laughs> what's, uh, what are some of the, uh, what's some of the crazier stories at Days and Days shows to happen? So, I know we talked about, um, last night, uh, the New Jersey yeah, incident. So, yeah, tell or, uh... everybody about the New Jersey. <laughs> so, not everybody knows that we did this once already, and this is the second time we're doing this, but we're going to move past that. <laughs> so tell tell us about the New so, Jersey yeah. incident. <laughs> so we were we were playing a show in a basement that was maybe like fifteen by fifteen, uh, and, and someone like rolled in in like a green man outfit uh, and threw two military grade smoke bombs into the show, and it was horrifying. It was just like in the middle of our set there was just smoke everywhere and, and, and I, I, I remember uh, Megan just grabbing my hand and it was like I felt like it was like some Tom Hanks war movie like so Megan was just like we gotta get out we gotta go 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 let's go don't <laughs> she was like pulling me out of the venue uh, it was it was horrifying yeah did it did it have that like yes. high like T- like pinging sound, you know, and everything in slow motion, his lips moving. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was mortifying. <laughs> uh, but luckily, Megan got me out of there. So, what is uh? <clears throat> wow, that's that's crazy. What are uh? <laughs> what are, what is what is some of more of the like unexpected things to happen on the road? Um things that you just wouldn't have expected when going there is there a town yeah, is there, we were, is there, I was going to say is there I mean, a town that just completely caught you off guard and just completely surprised you <laughs> well we uh, we had a, a show scheduled in Chicago with uh, Suicide Machines that I've been listening, listening to for years and uh, our van broke down before we could make it there. Um, and we're all super fucking bummed out. We still haven't played with them uh, since since that van broke down. But uh, we, we did get uh, a room at Motel 6 and some just ridiculous, um, <laughs> ridiculous shit went down. In that motel six room, uh, uh, we ended up sleeping in the 
in the um, in the parking lot of an auto zone, auto zone, <laughs> in an auto zone parking lot uh, while we're waiting for the part for a van to come in. Yeah, that was pretty uh, so ridiculous, Sam. Yeah. I I don't wanna I don't wanna go to. Uh, what specific, happened? No, because I what, don't want what to. happens in a Motel yeah. Six stays yeah. in a Motel Six. I mean, there's an absolute exactly. line. Yeah. Ambi- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's it's a line. Pretty ridiculous. You stayed in a Motel Six? No questions asked. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Exactly. And so you you you, you, you yeah. played all over. <laughs> you know all different types of shows. To you know you know thousand people with Weezer. Uh, you guys went overseas last year. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Every time we've been overseas has been in- incredible. The one uh, thought that comes to mind <laughs> when I think about um, our time uh, uh, across the, the ocean is uh, when I, the first time that we went, we uh, took my family, my, my mom and my dad, and my parent, uh, my, my, my mom and my dad and my sister and her partner, um, and we, we, we were in Italy, and I think it was Delta de Agua, is the name of the town, and, uh, we, 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 uh, got to, like, we, we played in someone's backyard, and they, like, fed us, like, uh, homemade pizza, and the next day, uh, we woke up on top of this, like, hill that overlooked the castle, but before that, uh, me and my wife, Veronica, got to, <laughs> we, like, we snuck out, and, uh, and went, and, um, we broke into this castle, uh, that, that overlooked the city, and it, it just, it was phenomenal. I, it, it, it's such a weird time. That's... It's still such a weird time to look back on, but it was just incredible. I, I remember it was like five in the morning, um, Italy time, and um, we were like overlooking this beautiful river uh, on, on top of this uh, castle. Yeah, it was great. That's awesome. And that's the thing is you never know what to expect when you're on the road. You know, and you really kind of have to go where the road takes you. It's just an adventure. And for those who don't have that nomadic spirit, there's there's something to be said about it, that that wanderlust. You know, I don't know other, a better word for it, but there's absolutely something to it. You know, and it's I feel so natural on the road. I, I miss traveling. Um, I, I miss going anywhere <laughs> besides my house, <laughs> for damn sure. But, you know, when things change, it'll be... It'll be nice. I think a lot of people have uh, gained a larger sense of understanding, and hopefully, hopefully, things will be a little bit more positive in in the future. Now, um, speaking yeah. speaking of positive, you guys just released an album about like a little over a month ago. Yeah. Uh, Show me the blueprints. Where, uh, and you guys also with that just signed to Fat Records insane like you were saying where you got from recording in your family's house you know doing vocals in a closet to recording with fat mike which all of us grew up with you know uh, yeah. what was what was that like that must have been surreal yeah it was ridiculous i uh, so we're so overwhelmed um recording with Mike and uh, like his whole crew, the the first time that we went over there, we we, we uh, flew into uh, Motor Studios, which is unfortunately no longer a thing. But uh, sorry, I can't hear myself. There we go. So we uh, so we flew into Motor Studios and um. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's like we, we 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 met with Mike and uh, we did like whippets and probably anybody ever should. And uh, 
just drink like glasses of vodka and um and then we started recording the album. It was, it was so strange. And then after that, it was, uh, it was just very professional and everyone was very uh, uh, patient with that. It was nice. It was great. That's awesome. And who, yeah, uh, uh, who engineered the album? Perfect people. The, Sorry, what was that? Uh, who engineered the album? Johnny Carey of Old Man Markley uh, engineered the album. And he's an absolute fucking genius. Like uh, uh, he, he, uh, I feel like he he took the like dirty kind of like DIY vibe that we have uh, and mixed it with um, what what that does. Uh, yeah. And what just so perfectly nice and clean and pristine. But you're right. You you, you still. You you know you still retained your grit, but it is much more of uh, refined. You know, and before that, you were you were the one primarily handling all the producing and engineering uh, duties before that, right? Yeah, I have uh, I, uh recorded everything uh, and mastered everything before this album. So. It was really scary going into a, a, like an actual studio because we'd just been recording in like a closet. Um, but yeah, everyone was so great, and um, it was a blast. And it must have been nice just to be able to focus on just playing your parts instead of having to worry about. Because I've, oh, yeah. I've I've been that person in a band before to have to record the album and then do all my guitar parts, and it's a lot. And it did not turn yeah. out the best. I mean, I'm not the best engineer, and or well, ten years ago I wasn't the best engineer. I'm a little bit better now, but uh, <clears throat> uh, it's it's a lot of responsibility, and you almost feel. I don't, to me, I couldn't just fully relax into it. And then later on with other projects, go to a go to a studio and go and record, and just let everybody else do the work. And all I need to do is just play guitar and stand there, and it was phenomenal. So I can totally relate. Yeah. It must have added to the creative process a lot, just not have to um, split your focus like that. Yeah, no, it was, it was great. Um, <laughs> having to not uh, worry about like when to stop the when, when to hit the record button and when to stop the record button and like how to mix and master everything was um, yeah, that was that that helped. It's, so so much. Um, I, I I could just I could really focus on just playing the songs how I wanted to play the songs, which is which is really nice. Um, yeah. Now, <clears throat> um, previously you had you had a lot of collaborations before this. Um, a lot of different collaborations. You got to work, you know, uh, <clears throat> with Leftover Crack. Um, and want to know. Who, if if anybody out there that you could you could do a collaboration with, you could do a track with, who who would it be? Watsky. Watsky. Why Watsky? I adore his his lyrics are fucking phenomenal. His uh, every, everything about anything that that dude has done is just lovely. Um, that's awesome. It, it, it's, I, he's gotten me through so many dark days. Uh, I, I, I really don't think that I would be alive still if it wasn't for um, Cardboard Castles. Ooh. That album is just phenomenal. It's unbelievable. Um, and, finish. and to like rap alongside that dude would just be fuck, man. That would be so fun. So, internet, you heard it. Hit the fucking internet button. Get Watsky over here. This is Jesse Sandeus. Watsky, you guys, you know. I'm just going to introduce the two of you. I'm sure he's watching somewhere out in the magical realm and how the internet works in the universe. So, Watsky, if you hear this, Jesse from Days and Days wants to throw down a few. He wants to make music. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's get this shit done, bro. George, I'm here for you. 
Now, uh, we do totally, I know it's going to sound strange, we do have a fan-submitted question for our first show. We do already have a fan. Uh, my next-door neighbor, Kate, she wants to know, neighbor Kate, if you could throw a house show in anybody's house, because you're pretty famous for just playing house shows wherever or parking lots, whose house would you throw a party in? Who would you want to party with? Dan Harmon. Dan Harmon. For sure. Yes. I know he has a sick fucking house. Uh, I, <laughs> there's at least three bathrooms. Um, That's huge. Justin Rayland would be there, I assume. Uh, I, we, we've already... I, 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 I'm pretty sure that uh, Jeff B. Davis would be in attendance. Um, I've already met Dan Harmon once, and he was nothing but absolutely lovely. Uh, so yeah, Dan Harmon's house for sure. Dan Harmon's house. Great. That would be phenomenal. For those who don't know, Dan Harmon, creator of the TV show Community, co-creator of Rick and Morty, um, unbelievable writer, great director, six seasons in a movie, everybody. Six seasons in a movie. That's gonna. Hell yeah. The movie is what's gonna pull us out of the darkest timeline. It's the only thing that can sh save yes. us. So I'm waiting for it. Because shit is getting wacky. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's getting, we need that fucking movie. It's getting fucking weird out yeah. there. Now, the, the name of the show is is Punky's Mixtape. And now, <clears throat> it'd be awful I didn't ask. Now, we all made mixtapes as kids, for those of us that were old enough to do so. And those who are a little bit younger, you probably made mix CDs. And then maybe eventually uh, you made Spotify playlists for your significant other or for yourself. Who knows? I'm, I'm I'm just imagining where the evolution of this is. But do you do you remember making mixtapes as a kid? I never made mixtapes as a kid. No. Um, I I recommended songs, but I but never did I actually t like take the time to uh to put a but, compilation together. Never. But it, what about as an adult? Is that something that you've done? Nope, I have always been a lazy piece of shit. Uh, well, so. <laughs> I'm here. I'm proactive. Who throw out? Who? who so we got we got Watsky on there. We can't. We we got to have Watsky. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So my 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 compilation all all put together <laughs> is uh, definitely Watsky. Uh, Motorhead for sure. Uh, Wu Tang Clan. We the Heathens. Um, uh, the Dreadnoughts. Nice. I, I, that's pretty much all I've been listening to uh, for the last like week. Uh, it's just like the, their new albums, just like um, Sea Shanties. That's been incredible. Yep. Uh, and it's then, really uh, good. On top of that, maybe the like a uh, collection of like Hans Zimmer's um, soundtrack songs Hans Zimmerman soundtrack yeah he did, he did like the soundtracks for like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and Sherlock Holmes and shit like that <laughs> so we got Watsky, Motorhead Wu-Tang Dreadnoughts, dude, that, that, that Sea Shanties album is phenomenal. If you guys haven't heard that Dreadnoughts, dude, check it out. Um, Hans Zimmer, not to be confused with Hans Gruber. <laughs> um, that's, you know, that's, that's definitely, that's a solid mix. That's a solid mix. I've been on a big O oh Brother kick. Have you ever listened to O oh Brother? Oh hell yeah! Also, oh shit! Before um, before he split up, yeah. idols, idols. Um, if you I D L E S idols, if you've not heard them before, fuck. That I is just like have it. everything they write is like it, if you want something to make you do push-ups. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the an idol. So good. That's I'll definitely check them out. So that's a band, that's one that I haven't heard of. So I'm definitely gonna check them out. Um, so 
before we head off, um, you're you're doing well. You're you're with family right now. How is the rest of the band? I know you all live in different parts of the country. Is everybody doing well right now? Yeah, we're all um, we're all lucky enough to be surrounded by family. Um, even though we we are all separated from each other, Whitney's in uh, New York City. Uh, Megan, our wash, our player is in San Antonio. Uh, Jeff is in Austin. So yeah, we're all we're, we're spread out, but um, we're uh, we're lucky enough to be surrounded by people who love us, and um, we're lucky enough to love each other, and we talk to each other every day. And I hope that y'all are talking to. You. Uh, people that you love every day as well. That's that's awesome. And then people, I don't think people, maybe some people don't realize just how fucking big Texas is. It's probably a pretty massive distance between y'all. It is fucking, it's ridiculous. It's, it's to, it, if I was to drive to um, Jeffrey, I, it would be three hours um, to Megan will be three and a half hours drive to the end of Texas. It would be twelve hours probably. No. See, that's that's insane. People think the distances in Maine are far. It's because we're one of the bigger New England states, but it, it ain't shit compared to Texas. Texas is huge. <laughs> so yeah, Chad. Um, everything's bigger, right? As they say, you know, large Marge sent me and all that. <laughs> Everything I know about Texas, I know from from Dust Till Dawn and Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> I'm 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 yet to go to Texas. I, the, hey, those those sentiments are not wrong. I <laughs> <laughs> um I am a huge I'm a huge barbecue nut. I fucking love barbecue. I've been I've been to Tennessee. I've had I have family in the Carolinas, so I'm used to that traditional style. I've been to Kansas City. Texas is one of the places that I need to hit on my barbecue bucket list. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Please, come through. Come, but, come to my house. Holy shit. My, my dad just made barbecue tonight, and it's... But, well, when we're but, up and traveling again, um, I'll definitely be on the road. I'll definitely plan on taking the mixtape out all around the country to do different things as we grow to expand the show. Um, Jesse, I really appreciate you coming on and doing this and making the first show fantastic. Um, we got a great treat. We're going to play all of Show Me the Blueprints from start to finish for everybody. So, I mean, it, that way you get a really good feel for the band. You know, I don't think you can ever get like a solid feel for a band by one or two songs. That's why we play a couple here, you know, and back to back. So you can really kind of compare and get an understanding, you know. We, we got the time. We can do the deep cuts. So, um... Any any words for our listeners before uh, they check out the album? Um, so I I hope you like it. Um, if uh, times are weird right now, um, if you can't find solace in uh, friends, uh, family, or uh, professionals in the support industry, please um, hit us up. Uh, go to our um, Go to our email, our Facebook page. We're not doing anything. Uh, hit us up. Yeah. But, uh, don't don't keep those feelings uh, toxifying inside of you. Uh, uh, inside of you, because the it, 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 uh, stagnation does uh, nothing but uh, make everything worse. So exactly. Please don't keep it to yourself. Hit us up. That's truly appreciated. That's it, I guess. This has been Jesse Sandeas of Days and Days. I thank you from the bottom of my resin-covered heart. I thank you so much, my friend. This has been phenomenal. Uh, we got a couple other treats later down the road that we're uh, planning that we were talking about beforehand to surprise you folks. So uh, this won't be the last time you all see Jesse on the show. So again, thank you so much. It's greatly appreciated. You stay yeah, well. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure and a fucking blast hanging out. Yeah, please be safe. Absolutely. It's great making new friends with you, and I look forward to the next time we chat. Bye, folks.
this. All the love. <laughs>